Rogers again, former lieutenant detective and member um, of the Joint Terrorism Task Force. Sir, you've been with us for a while now. You've been listening to all of this new information. What do you make of the new information that you've heard? Well, as we have repeated uh, quite often, it is good news, if there's any good news out of this, that they do have the uh, shooter in custody. But as you're on the air, I received a text from a police officer here in New Jersey who said, this is what we train for. The El Paso Police Department did a superb, outstanding job in bringing their training uh, to the scene. And you know what they did? They saved a lot of lives. So uh, uh, police departments all over the country are trained in active shooter scenarios like this. And I've got to tell you, my hat's off to them. And now what will happen is the investigation continues with the forensic studies, detectives, the FBI, the ATF. Everyone's going to get, get involved now and they're going to connect a lot of dots to make sure. And we said this earlier to make absolutely sure that this gunman acted alone. If that's not the case, there's not going to be an all clear sign until the police are absolutely sure that the uh, people in that area and around that community are safe. And Steve, you talked about the, the, the active shooter, uh, the, the way the police have to handle a situation like this and the protocol. And that protocol is to just go right in, right? I mean, you, you can't waste any time because every few seconds somebody could be getting killed. Well, I took active shooter training many, many times, and you're absolutely right. It's a far cry from what we did in the 70s and 80s. But you, 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 you don't rush in, but there's a very methodical, tactical way you get into these buildings or into these areas where a shooter is quickly, but very, very effectively. So I'll tell you what, you want to you want to see heroes. It's those cops going in there knowing that maybe some of them won't come out, but they're going in there putting their lives on the line like they did in El Paso. And thank God almighty, they were able to prevent more fatalities. Steve, the finest in our country have law enforcement training for the rest of us who don't. Uh, you know, we've gone we've undergone active shooter drills in our place of business, you know, various locations, maybe schools, maybe hospitals, you know, but do we need more of that? Yeah, I, I, I do. And, and also, as we were speaking earlier, I was once told some of the safest places in the country are casinos. Why? They have cameras all over the place. They've got enough security. I mean, uh, maybe at some point this is what we have to do in large establishments like malls. Increase visible security, more cameras. And again, we do have uh, citizen police academies around the country now. Maybe we have to add in those citizen police academies some training. What do I do if I am in a situation? situation where there is an active shooter. All lessons learned as we move forward. Yeah. You know, we talked earlier about uh, the fact that uh, this uh, young man, this 21-year-old suspected shooter, is still alive and how rare that is. Does that tell you anything about the, the suspect in this case? I'll tell you what it tells me is the superb job that the police did. I mean, they could have had a negotiator in there. They could have somehow talked him down. Obviously, at this point, the guy didn't want to die. Most of them want to go down, quote unquote, in a blaze of glory. But I, I believe we're going to find out that the police did a superb job to keep this guy alive in order to get more information from him. So, you know, as time goes on, let's see what comes uh, around. But I'll tell you what, my hat's off again to what the police did to get this individual alive. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, from all accounts, it seems like law enforcement in El Paso did an incredible job. You know, you heard stories from my witnesses, Steve, of people being in the Walmart store and, and you know, the one eyewitness said there were maybe 100, maybe 200 people and they were all rushed to the back and they were hiding back there and you've got people trying to help each other. You know, you hear stories of terror and, and absolute horror in these situations, but then you also end up hearing the stories of survival and how people help one another and the true goodness that is in our community of, of, of neighbor helping neighbor. Yes. The American people we always know rise to some of the most tragic incidents to help each other. And I'm sure that if there were people bleeding, we haven't heard it yet, but there are other people who are there trying to stop the bleeding. People come together in tragedies. And I've got to tell you, uh, again, our hats off to the people who were there. I'm sure we're going to hear a lot of heroic stories as we move forward. But saying that, I've always shared with people, let's pray for our country, pray for our police, and pray for the victims in this case. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. All right, Steve Rogers, uh, stand by for us if you would. Thank you so much.